Opening day is here. Let's talk bold predictions on fantasy baseball today in five. Welcome into FBT in five on Thursday, March 28th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Chris Towers. And let's talk bold predictions. Chris, you are up first. I'm going to reuse one from last year because we only got to see O'Neill Cruz play for nine games before he was cruelly taken away from us. But my bold prediction, number one, O'Neill Cruz finishes as the number one shortstop in fantasy. Now, he probably needs to cut the strikeout rate from where it was as a rookie. The good news is I did some math. The last 276 plate appearances from for O'Neill Cruz, which includes September of his rookie season, it includes last spring, it includes this spring, and it includes the nine games he played last year. His strikeout rate is down to 28% in those 276 plate appearances. It's a weird sample, but it's not a tiny sample, so it could be indicative of some improvements that he's made. Obviously, we know he crushes the ball. We saw that in spring. Three of the 10 hardest hit balls in spring were by O'Neill Cruz. That's across the entire league. Uh, we know he can run. I, I think there's... 270 batting average, 35 to 40 homers, 25 stolen bases, 100 plus run potential here for O'Neill Cruz. Speaking of players who hit the ball hard, bold prediction number one for me Christian Encarnacion Strand hits 40 home runs and will be drafted in the top three rounds of fantasy drafts next year. So he hit three, uh, 33 home runs last season between the minors and the majors. He finished the season really strong. Given that secured playing time now, 70-grade power, amazing ballpark, great American ballpark to hit in, I think Encarnacion Tran could pull that off. I'm thinking kind of like Austin Riley's breakout season, mm -hmm. and then he was a second or third round pick the following year. Bold prediction number two, back to you. Jesus, Jesus Lizardo is not a top three starting pitcher on the Miami Marlins. Don't ask me which ones will be better than him. Because it's not necessarily about that. Although I think Yuri Perez, AJ Puck, I think Trevor Rogers, we've seen a version of Trevor Rogers at the major league level that's better than any version of Jesus Lazardo we've seen. So I think there are lots of interesting options in the Marlins rotation, obviously. But part of it for me is just Lazardo really only excels in one way. He gets a lot of strikeouts, 10.6K per nine last year. Control is not terrible, but it's not great. His quality of contact numbers, Decent, but not great. His whip, usually pretty good, not great. Has a long injury track record, including a forearm strain that knocked him out for much of the 2022 season. I just think there's a lot of ways things can go wrong for Jesus Lazardo, And I didn't actually draft him in any of my leagues this year as a result. All right, I'm going with a similar one, a pitcher. It's kind of like a parlay bold prediction, right? Bobby Miller is the most valuable Dodgers pitcher this season. So a few things have to happen. Tyler Glass now misses time at some point this year. Yoshinobu Yamamoto takes a little bit more time to acclimate, and maybe as a result, the final numbers don't get to where we want them to be by the end of the season. And Bobby Miller just has this breakout season that I certainly think that he's capable of. I, I think we all think he's capable of. Mm -hmm. He throws the ball extremely hard. He's got wipeout secondary pitches. If he stays healthy for 170, 180 innings this year, I think this is certainly achievable for Bobby Miller. Chris? Your third bold prediction. Mitch Garver is the number one catcher in fantasy baseball in 2024. Would you take a 251 average, 87 runs, 90 RBI, and 37 homers from your catcher? Yes. I think you would. That's what Mitch Garver's averaged per 162 games since the start of the 2019 season. We are not talking about a particularly small sample size here. He has to stay healthy. I know that's been a problem, but he's going to be the everyday DH for the Seattle Mariners. I'm hoping not being behind the plate as much will help keep him healthy. And I think he is absolutely one of, if not the best hitters at the catcher position. But, but, but Chris, did you know, know that I he's know. 0 for 31 in T-Mobile T-Mobile Park? Yeah, it's not great. Maybe, <laughs> may, look, maybe it's like a Teoscar Hernandez situation. He just Am can't I hit there. I'm I'm not willing to write him off based on 31 plate appearances. He only struck out, I think, eight times in those 31 plate appearances. I'd be more concerned if it was like 16 times. Eight times? Eh, who cares? Mitch Garver is a legit good hitter in his career. 825 career OPS. If he stays on the field and he's their everyday DH and he plays 100. 
30, 140 plus games, this could be achievable. If he, if he stays healthy for that much, he could hit 30 home runs this year. That is Mitch Garver. My final one, it's really bold. It's spicy. Michael Harris outperforms Ronald Acuna this season. Just end the podcast there. Don't explain it. That's it. Uh, that is it. So, obviously, Ronald Acuna probably has to miss some time, or he's hampered by this meniscus injury he dealt with earlier in the spring. Maybe he just tries to play through it, and he's not himself. Chances are Ronald Acuna will probably be fine, but if he's not, and Michael Harris has this awesome season where he goes 30-30 and hits 280-plus, which I don't think is out of the realm of possibility, mm -hmm. then uh, this could happen. Michael Harris outperforms Ronald Acuna this season. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we will be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.